All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is the 5th of October, and uh, we had the latest area of low pressure that's been pushing across the central swathe of the British Isles uh, through the course of today, uh, dropping some very, very significant rainfall. In fact, we've seen upwards of an inch of rain falling within an hour in parts of London, causing some flooding issues uh, there and of course the area of low pressure that has been deepening as it's been crossing the uh, across England through the course of today has uh, had some very persistent rainfall wrapping around the centre of low pressure and as of recording the centre of low pressure is now just about exiting um, eastern England moving into the North Sea we're going to continue to see um, that rain uh, persists, becoming a little bit more fragmented in terms of the persistency of the rain um, becoming more showery in nature, but we're going to see uh, a continuation of those showers piling in on that very keen, very stiff northerly airflow um, associated with that area of low pressure. But as that area of low pressure this evening starts to exit uh, into the North Sea, we're going to be left with... Um, a legacy of clear skies, light winds, could see some frost um, locally, northern England, southern and central Scotland through the course of this evening. And then as we push through tomorrow and into, um, what would that be, into Thursday, um, we've got um, the frontal system associated with the remnants of Hurricane uh, Sam. That is going to be kind of pushing in through Ireland, Northern Ireland, western portions of England and Wales, and through um, western and central Scotland through the course of Thursday. So um, what is um, going to take place is, as well as the wind and the rain, some fairly persistent rain at that, you can see here this is uh, the setup here. So uh, gone is that area of low pressure that we've got as a, right at this very moment in time. There's the remnants of Sam and the associated frontal system um, you can see here affecting the northern portion of the British Isles here. But what also is interesting is the fact that while we're going to see temperatures, um, you know, lo low single figures, northern England, southern central Scotland, into the Highlands uh, through tomorrow morning, we could waken up actually on Thursday morning um, on a very, very different feeling note. And the reason why is because as that frontal system pushes in, we're going to start to pull our air in from the Azores, all the way from the Azores up into the UK, eh, ahead and along that frontal system. And um, with the with Sam being a, a tropical origin system, coming out of the tropics, it's pulling air from the tropics into the middle altitudes with that feature. So that's transporting that warmth northwards. And we're going to see... Uh, much milder conditions associated with this setup here. And during the course of, uh, of of Thursday and Friday, we could be talking about temperatures even in southern Scotland, close to 20 Celsius, unusual for this time of the year. And even further south, 20, 21, not out of the question, especially if you get some sort of sunshine. This has got a lot of moisture associated with it, so a lot of cloud cover. So we may not see temperatures rise into the, the low 20s, for example, but certainly 19, 20, fairly widely. And that is quite unusual for the time of the year. Um, and you can see here that the frontal system eventually uh, moves its way down. But you notice here that the area of high pressure over Eastern Europe uh, at 1040 millibars actually does a pretty good job at kind of pushing that frontal system to the west so it always keeps the remnant front that cold front associated with sam it uh, kind of to the west of the british isles here so um it's going to do a pretty good job at that i think and what it's going to do is it's going to keep things relatively settled away from the northwestern portion of the uk so while it might be wet windy uh, northwest highlands for example down across the bulk of england and wales you could have a lot of very decent weather uh, indeed here but you can see if we look at the 850 millibar temperature chart here and um, we've got the current chilly theme area of low pressure at the moment exiting into the north sea we're left with a cool air mass in place but you notice here to the west of the uk 
associated with that Sam still well out over the Atlantic at this point in time. But you notice this kind of little tongue, this little, um, you know, kind of almost like a shark's fin of warm air. That then pushes into the UK, replaces the cool uh, kind of chilly theme that we have going through the course of t uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. That then is replaced by that warm subtropical air. So we, as I skip through the sequence, you can see that moving in. As Sam's fr frontal system approaches from the west, we'll pull that warmth in from the southwest, from the Azores here. And then eventually what happens is we'll maintain that kind of reasonably mild theme to, uh, through the rest of this week. And then eventually what will take place is a frontal system will push through and pull cooler air from the northwest down in over the British Isles here. So uh, we'll keep our, our eyes on that. I want to finish the, uh, this evening's video by looking at the GFS um, 10 millibar temperature forecast here. Um, of course, I've been speaking about the winter season. Uh, the previous couple of videos was the pros and cons with regards to the overall drivers in place. But uh, I'd made mention about how the modelling was indicating that we're going to start to see warming taking place. The polar, uh, polar vortex is uh, stronger than normal. Uh, over the last couple of weeks or so but we there is strong indication that that polar vortex will start to weaken you've got those zonal winds uh, blowing um, in a circular motion over the pole at 10 hpa so away up at the very top of the stratosphere those winds are expected to slacken significantly and as we push through this animation here you can see here fairly cold core of a uh, of low pressure here way up in the upper levels of the uh, of the atmosphere but as we skip through the loop through the month there is indications this is off the, the gfs by the way and start to notice the warming taking place over siberia here that may be an indicator so watch here how it pushes the lobe of colder air southwards so you can see how the warmth over Siberia, and this can be a classic telltale sign, by the way, of, of stratospheric warming and eventually the possibility of a, even a sudden stratospheric warming here. The, this can be the hallmarks, the signs, the early signs of something taking place away up within the stratosphere here. And uh, so you can see here the warming moves from Siberia over the Arctic region and uh, it's you know, it may not happen, but it certainly is exciting to see the models at least hinting at something like this here, especially this early on in the season. And of course, in the, the recent video, I spoke about the solar maximum, solar minimum, and the connection between the, uh, the Arctic Oscillation here. So I've released an article here that has literally just been published this evening. I urge you to have a read of it. And it basically just looks in a little bit more detail at what I was discussing in the previous uh, part one and part two of the winter, the latest winter video here. So I urge you to check that out on markfogunweather.com. Of course, hit the like button and of course, subscribe for the very latest videos. Hope you have a great evening. Bye for now.